Galatians chapter 5, and uh, tonight uh, we continue another of our series, <laughs> uh, our series which is our theme for the year, Walking in the Spirit, and uh, we looked here, we're going to start in Galatians 5 as we will with every message uh, in this series here, speaking about the fruit of the Spirit. Our goal this year is to focus on this passage and to consider the things that we should see happening and being cultivated in our life uh, as a result of walking in the Spirit, walking after the things of God, allowing God to guide us, allowing God uh, to direct us. And so uh, tonight uh, we look at verse number 22, Galatians 5, 22, and uh, we don't have to go very far into the verse just yet, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. And uh, we're still on love. Last time we looked together, we looked at our love for God and what, uh, what that should look like and proving how much we love God based on what we do. Uh, we love God by keeping his commandments, by doing what he has asked us to do and uh, challenged us to uh, prove to God how much uh, we love him. So tonight, I want to take that in a little bit different direction as we consider the fruit of the Spirit, as we consider walking in the Spirit, and as we consider love tonight, I want to look at our love for others. So let's pray, and uh, we'll take a minute here to see what the Lord will have for us this evening. Father, we are grateful today. Uh, again, Lord, here the last message of the day. We ask that you would uh, do a, a work in our hearts, Lord, as only you can. Pray that you would uh, give us exactly what we need tonight, Lord, that it, uh, we'd be blessed by uh, hearing from you. We know that your presence is among us, but Lord, uh, for us to be able to uh, hear and receive, Lord, we need you to do a work. We need to be open to it. I pray that we uh, would not have anything hindering us from, Lord, hearing the message or uh, adhering to it either. And Lord, you would just um, complete the day, Lord. It's been a good day to be in your house. We thank you for, uh, Lord, the unity uh, in our spirit. And Lord, as we consider our love for others today, may we get a biblical perspective on it, and Lord, that it will help us in our Christian life in the days ahead. Please be with the many that cannot be here tonight, Lord, with uh, health concerns, and Lord, the burdens on our hearts. We just ask that you would, uh, Lord, just be very real to us this week, that we would feel your presence, and Lord, we would see your hand at work, that we might even see results, and uh, Lord, answers even just in, in, in the next few hours, Lord, if not the next few days. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Uh, we look at what uh, should be cultivated in our life when we walk in the Spirit. The first thing he mentions is love. Are we still on? Okay, good. I'm paranoid now about these microphones going out. Uh, love. Uh, love is one of those things that uh, usually is synonymous with Christianity. Uh, love is something that many people expect from Christians. And this world today, when they see a Christian acting in a way that they don't think is right... Normally, the response is, well, I thought Christians were supposed to love everyone. And uh, that's true. We are. It's part of what God has called us to, part of what God has asked us to be. God is love, and it is impossible for us to live for God and not to love other people. That's just part of it. Um, I've got several verses here I want to look at and kind of analyze and look at this here. Uh, I'm not going to keep you real long tonight. This is a simple thought and really just a reminder for us. Uh, I think each of us has a desire to love other people, uh, to do so in a way that Christ does. But I want to begin with my, with my cautionary tale. I want to begin with uh, my, my exhortation, as it were. I want to I berate us for a little while. <laughs> uh, sometimes, as Christians, we get this idea uh, that as we look through Scripture and as we see what, uh, what Christ does in his ministry and how he handles people, Sometimes we get the idea that we say things like, well, to love someone means to be willing to tell them the truth, no matter how much it might hurt their feelings. And that is a true statement. That is a true um, thought. Uh, when you love someone, you're willing to tell them the truth. Uh, now, of course, we talked about, I believe last week, uh, if, if it hasn't been this week already, uh, speaking the truth in love, you know, those kinds of things. But sometimes... God's people get this idea that, well, well, to really love them means that I'm going to preach the gospel to them. And to some Christian, that means, you know, shoving it down their throat or, you know, dragging them through the mud, making them feel bad about themselves. And uh, I don't know that we have that problem. I hope we don't have that problem today. But there's a whole brand of Christianity. And unfortunately, there's a whole brand of, uh, uh, of independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptists, King James only, uh, who have had, they have this idea that true love uh, for, for the others in the world, you know, the us, we, and them, uh, is to be the vengeance and justice of God. And they say things like, well, I, I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Let's get some Bible first. <laughs> Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to jump around in Paul's letters 
uh, for the most part, and uh, then get into the Gospels as we finish out. But Paul had much to say about our love for others. Uh, we'll begin in 1 Peter chapter 1. And uh, Paul had uh, many things to say. We're beginning here with Peter, uh, I should say, and um, we'll catch uh, uh, m uh, many of uh, Paul's writings as well. Uh, but these epistles written to the churches, um, it is clear to us uh, that one of the things we're going to struggle with as Christians is our love. Uh, because there's so much written about it in Scripture. Uh, just the word love itself, by itself, just L-O-V-E, appears, if, I'm, if, I don't, if, I, if I remember correctly, 442 times in the Bible. And uh, 400 times. Now, that's four, not 400 verses, and that's not any of the, uh, you know, um, the extended versions of it. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm working on my English. Sister Rosie's helping me with that. Um, Wednesday night, I'll talk about that when we get to that, 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 that part of English that I'm working on. I think I have an answer. So, again, spoiler for Wednesday. Come back Wednesday. You'll get more of it. Uh, but uh, uh, when, we, when we look at the, uh, I know there's a word for that. Uh, when, when you take that, that's the base word. And then I want to say an extrapolation, but that's just a giant word, you know. Uh, we take love or loveth or uh, loves, whatever that may be. Love appears by itself over 400 times. And um, we expect that because God is love, right? That's, that's what we're told from Scripture. And um, there's a whole generation uh, that has taken that thought and gone way too far one way. Uh, there's a whole group and a sect of Christianity, if we can call it Christianity, that has taken that too far on the other end of the spectrum. We need to make sure we're in the middle. We understand what it is that we need to look at. So let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22-23. The Bible says this, Seeing ye have purified your souls... In obeying the truth through the Spirit, all right, so we're beginning with being in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So a couple things we see in these two verses. We see the Spirit, we see the word of God, and we see our salvation. Each of us has experienced those things. If you've been born again, the Holy Spirit resides within you and you adhere to, listen to the word of God. You took him at his word. And so by the basis of our salvation, he says that's the foundation that, that we're laying this upon. What should we do then? He says, verse 23, he's, uh, I'm sorry, verse uh, 22, he says, we've obeyed the truth through the spirit unto, what is it unto? Unfeigned love of one another. Uh, unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. And uh, we could look at this and say, all right, well, we ought to love one another. And that is part of the teaching. But more importantly, what's being said in this verse is that we need to love with an unfeigned love, with a pure heart and fervently. When I read that, what that tells me is that there's going to be a temptation in my heart to be fake. There's going to be a temptation in my heart not to be very fervent with my love. There's, there's going to be a temptation for me in my heart not to have a pure heart with the love that I have for others. It's one thing to do nice things for people. It's one thing to be nice to people. It's one thing uh, to do a good deed, but to do so out of the true love of your heart, out of, to do something out of a pure heart, fervently, he says, unfeigned, not fake. That takes a little bit more than just being able to put on a smile and, yeah, everything's good. <laughs> You know, we came through the holidays, you know, I'm sure each of us was around at least one family member where you just kind of have to paint it on and things are just hunky-dory, everything's just fine, and then you leave and your face hurts because you've been holding that faith for so long, you know, just every holiday comes around and it's, it vexes your righteous soul from day to day, you know. Uh, I'm glad for that part that I'm a Christian and not Jewish. I don't think I could handle eight nights of Hanukkah with some of the people that I spent a half a night of Christmas with. <laughs> and uh, I say that in jest this Christmas, I, I already told you, God blessed, and uh, we had a good time. But we know how people can be, we know how our heart can be. Uh, Peter's writing here and he says, hey, make sure that it's not fake. Make sure that it's unfeigned love of the brethren specifically. We'll get to others in a minute. We're talking about God's people. Uh, we're talking about, and I, I noticed something here. I, I did a little Bible study um, about um, treating other people and, and dealing with other people, especially those that let you down, especially those that um, uh, fall short of, of the standard we think we should have for Christ. And I came back to one principle again and again and again. Every time I read in scripture where we're admonished to deal with or to not deal with a certain individual, whether it be uh, to accept them in fellowship or to shun them out of fellowship, in both the instances, we are told to treat them as a brother and uh, led me to some interesting studies about me as a brother physically in my life and, and, and the role I should have. 
But what the Bible here is speaking about is our love for the brethren. He's talking about spiritually. There's a reason we call one another brother and sister from time to time. I'm trying to pepper that in. So tell me how you think, what, what you think about that. If you don't like it, give it to yourself. No, I'll, I'll gladly take whatever feedback you got. But uh, we call one another brother, right, in Christ. I figure, why not sister as well? That's just where we're at. We're all in the same family. And uh, family can be contentious, right? But when, a, when, when the chips are down, which is probably not the right phrase to be using, but when uh, I, I think uh, one, of, one of my wife's cousins, sorry, I'm just, it's Sunday night. This is kind of like my Friday. <laughs> and so, you know, boy, I was about to say I let my hair down, but just, okay. <laughs> Let's start over. Family can be difficult sometimes, but when it matters, you want family. Uh, when you come down to it, right, when it comes down to brass tacks, and I don't know the origin of that one either, so I'm, a, I'm hoping that one's okay. But when it really matters, that's when family comes in. Not friends, not acquaintances, you want family. And spiritually, God puts us in families, and we ought to have a love for one another. We ought to have a love that's born of our, of our common ancestry in Jesus Christ, right? Join heirs with Christ. He is, uh, God is our heavenly father together. Jesus Christ is, is the man that, that binds us all together. And if for no other reason, we ought to love one another because of that. With an unfeigned love of the brethren, not fake. And uh, he says, out of a pure heart, fervently. And there's probably some Christians in your spiritual family, extended even, that you say, I have a hard time loving them. Well, just think about why we should love them. Think about what Christ has done for you, has done for them. And he has put us together in this place that these are the people we need to rely on. It makes it a little bit easier. And Jesus says that, uh, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 that if we follow the Spirit, if we walk in the Spirit, the first thing we're going to experience is love. And tonight we're talking about our love for others. Go with me to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Brother Tim, when you get to this, don't text me. Brother Pratt gets on and listens to my messages and then texts me in real time while he's listening. So that was a good joke right there. Well, thanks for laughing. Nobody did when I was there. <laughs> but uh, so when you get here, brother, hello. Thank you for chiming in or tuning in. And uh, everyone else that will catch this on the broadcast later. So I love you all. Colossians chapter 1. And I encourage you if, you, if you've got access to our YouTube page, Facebook page, look this stuff back up again. Put it on in the background, you know, uh, if nothing else, it'll help you fall asleep if you're having trouble with that. And uh, you have that available to you. I can do CDs as well. We can get you headphones, the whole, the whole thing. Uh, forget ASMR. Just throw on some preaching. You'll be out in two or three minutes. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 7. And the Bible says, As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. We read this this morning, right? Speaking about faithfulness. He says in verse 8, Who declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This man was faithful. He was going to commit, uh, or he was going to transmit this information. And uh, he brings back to Paul this uh, report that, hey, they've got a love of the Spirit. Paul was encouraged by that because it changes some things. In verse number nine, he says, what that does for me is I know that you're praying for me. How many of you, and I'm the first one, would be honest enough to say, I have promised to pray for somebody and failed to come through on that promise? Come on, you can be honest. Anytime, right? Come on, let's be honest, right? Just pray all of us at some point. Uh, it could have been for whatever circumstances, whatever it may be, right? Now, let me ask you this. Did you not pray for them because you didn't love them? No, I don't think so. And if you did, please, we're not going to go there tonight. <laughs> but our love for others ought to affect the way we pray for them. When, when my family gets a hold of me and says, hey, I, I need prayer for this, that goes right to the top of the priority list, right? My needs are usually first. My family is usually right after that. My immediate family after that. My extended family, church family, right? Whatever it may be, um, that's normally how we think, right? But when we truly love others, the immediate need is the next thing that comes along. People pull me aside, send me a text message, make, uh, have a phone call. We meet together face to face and they say, preacher, I got this going on right now. Top of the priority list. Why? Because I love them. Because I care for them. And there are some folks that <laughs> they'll give a prayer request and we think, well, I mean, yeah, God can handle that. That's not, that's not really something we need to pray about, is it? But it was something that was on their heart. Paul was 
uh, encouraged. Paul had this guarantee, as it were, uh, that their prayers back and forth for one another were going to be heard because they had a love for one another. It ought to affect, it ought to affect the way that we interact. It ought to affect the way that we care for one another, that we pray for one another, uh, being faithful in that way. Uh, let's move ahead. Philippians chapter 2. Back just a little bit there. Philippians chapter 2. A love, an unfeigned love, a fervent love, love that comes from a pure heart. Talking about God's people. And uh, I tell you, if you find it hard loving God's people, um, they might just find it hard loving you too. Uh, we hear about all kinds of people talk about Christians being a, a loving people on both sides. Some see it, some don't. And uh, we need to be a good testimony that way. We need to, especially when it comes to the family, when it comes to God's people, the brethren. And uh, it's part of walking in the Spirit. If you're not experiencing that kind of love for God's people, you might want to consider your walk. You might want to look at that. Philippians chapter 2 and uh, verse number 1. You hear about people that, you know, they're out of sorts with somebody. And uh, I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. They find out maybe that person got saved and think, well, I don't know. We'll see, right? Well, hey, we got to love the brethren, regardless of where they came from. And uh, such were some of ye, right? Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse number 1. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. He says, if you've got even one tiny little bit of overlap between you and a brother, anything that draws the two of you together, maybe it's just that the two of you go to similar like-minded churches that preach the word, all right? We're not in the same fellowship, so to speak. We're not in the same church body together, but there's that little bit of fellowship. He says, if there's anything that can draw you together in Christ, now notice he says in Christ, he says, verse 2, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. That's true love. If there's anything that binds you together to a brother, you ought to have a love for them like Christ has for you. That can be tough sometimes, right? We hear about folks that are in need. We hear about people that it would be inconvenient for us to reach out, to be an encouragement, to be a help. To, to, to help them in their Christian life. But hey, if we truly love them, it would show in our interactions with them. Again, we're talking about the brethren. In uh, Romans, Romans chapter 15, verse number 30, Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit. There's that love of the Spirit. Again, we're following, walking in the Spirit. He says that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. It ought to affect our interactions. It ought to affect our prayers. Um, go with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Our love for others uh, has changed quite a bit. It used to be uh, that it took very little for people to find common ground. Uh, it used to be that just, just being an American was enough for somebody to say, hey, we're on the same team, on the same side. We're so divided today, and I'm just talking physically. Uh, there are so many schisms and, 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 and just all kinds of uh, divisions in our country and in our people. Uh, it used to be, you know, if you had a neighbor, you were excited about it. Now it's... <laughs> Uh, you know, like a good neighbor, stay over there, uh, that kind of thing. You know, uh, Andy was going for it today. She said, like a good neighbor, Staples is, the no, that's not it. And uh, we started throwing all kinds of different ones together. But um, it used to be that the mark of a good neighbor was somebody was there, was there for you and would do anything for you. A cup of sugar is kind of the, the cliche of what came out of it, you know. And uh, I've literally gone to my neighbor and said, I literally need a cup of sugar. Uh, and three eggs, you know, and uh, also some bread. And uh, if you have some milk, we could <laughs> use that as well. Uh, but today, the standard, it seems, for a good neighbor is how much you stay out of other people's business. And uh, just as people, we've changed uh, kind of in the way we interact with the world around us. Everybody's a lot more guarded and cagey, and we kind of keep to ourselves. And, you know, this is my, this is my castle, and you stay in your kingdom kind of thing. Uh, but when it comes to Christianity, and that's just us naturally, spiritually, we have to be a lot more open. We have to be a lot more loving and giving and, and uh, uh, drawing in those, uh, hey, we need one another. Uh, there's going to be days where I need you. 
And there's going to be days where you need me. And we let so many little things get in between. And, you know, we don't like this person's personality or that person, you know, looks at me the wrong way. I don't like the way they comb their hair, whatever it may be. And uh, we let the smallest things get in between all that. And uh, if we're walking in the spirit, we'll love one another. Romans chapter 12, look at verse number nine. And I'm trying to be quick tonight. Romans 11, I'm sorry, 12, Romans 12, I was on the right page, verse number nine. It says, let love be without dissimulation. That word means uh, trying to uh, uh, cover up the, the true meaning of it. It's a, it's a deceptive word. Uh, dissimulation often is seen when someone is upset by something, but they're trying to put on a good face. It's that, uh, that unfeigned love would be the opposite of it. This would be a feigned love. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. We like to use that verse speaking about sin and things in our lives, but in the direct context, he's talking about loving one another. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. If you've got any bit of good in your relationship with someone, you got to love them without dissimulation. (coughs) Verse 10, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. There's that brother again, the way we ought to love one another, like family. In honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit. There's that spirit again, serving the Lord. And again, we're tied back to the fact that the reason we are in the same boat with these folks is because of the Lord, because of our salvation. Uh, In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another. Right? That's a wonderful thought. One toward another. Just we love each other more and more every year. And every day that passes by, our bond is closer and uh, all of that. Why? Because we're saved, because we're born again, because we are uh, knit together with the Spirit of God. We walk in the Spirit, and so it ought to draw us closer together. How can two walk together except they be agreed, right? And if we're agreed, then boy, do we have sweet fellowship. But then he says this. He says, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men. Mm. I don't like that one as much. <laughs> I can get on board with the brethren if I have to. Some brethren are, are, are just, I got no problem loving them. Uh, they are sweet people. They are kind. Great fellowship. Could spend hours talking to them. There's others that, you know, they're a little bit harder to love. And I'm sure each of us has our days where we're that person. But it's still the brethren. We still have all these ties that bind, right? But then he extends it to all men. He says, even as we do toward you. Paul says, we have love for you, and we extend that love to all men. And it brings us back to these thoughts about walking in the Spirit. He says, the fruit of the Spirit is love toward the brethren, right? He says, the the fruit of the Spirit is love for those that you agree with. Or he says the fruit of the Spirit is, is love for everybody that's a part of your church family. Or for those that haven't done you wrong. Or for those that are on your side and that agree with you and think that you, you know, walk on water. No. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love. One thing we see in Jesus' ministry, we see many characteristics. But the one thing we see is his love. I think I mentioned that last week. Maybe not. Maybe it's yet to come. I'll give it to you anyway. We see so many times where the Bible says Jesus looked out on the multitudes, he had compassion on them because they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. It says that, excuse me, he saw the rich young ruler. And the Bible says, beholding him, he loved him. We see Jesus in every interaction where he sees a sinner. He sees a person that needs help, someone who needs hope, someone that's coming to him for some kind of a restoration. We see his love for them. It's the kind of love we need for this world as we go out into it. You say, well, preacher, you don't know. Yeah, you're right, I don't. But Jesus does. In Luke chapter 6, he said, I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. That's tough. He goes on to speak about people that would uh, despitefully use us, (laughs) treat us badly on purpose, with the intent to stir us up on purpose. It's hard to love those people. It's hard to love the people that have caused us issues in life that we we are going to carry to the day we die. Nevertheless, the fruit of the Spirit is love. In John chapter 13, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also 
love one another. But this shall all men know, well, I'm sorry, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And you know, one of the things that I've seen over and over and over and over and over and over again are circumstances where people have seen a Christian who had every reason not to love someone, who had every reason to throw the book at them, court case after court case, civil suit after civil suit, charges that could be placed and yet are dropped. Why? Because of the love they have in Christ. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that it's simple. But that's what it looks like to walk in the Spirit. To look at someone that you have every reason to condemn them, to judge them, and to punish them. And you say, no. In love, I'm going to shove that aside. Because there was a day when you stood before God... And God had every reason to judge you, and to punish you, and to torture you. And he said, I'm willing to let that go. You say, yeah, but I'm not God. <laughs> That's why we have to walk in the Spirit. That's why we have to live there. That's why every morning we have to get up and put that old man to death. And that's why, that's why the Bible is so strong in its language. We don't lay him down for a nap. We don't, we don't set him down to rest. No, we put him to death because that's what it's going to take. If we're going to love others the way Jesus Christ loves us, we're going to have to put to death the old man completely, all the way in the ground. Go to 1 John chapter 4. We'll finish with this verse. I think it ties everything together nicely. 1 John chapter 4. So walking in the Spirit, the first attribute we see as part of the fruit of the Spirit, again, it's all one fruit, it's all one package deal. When we walk in the Spirit, we'll see all these things. The first three that we see are done within, inwardly. God will, God will express these things through Himself, through us. Love being the first one. We saw our love for God tonight, we see our love for others. How's your love for the brethren? I hope good. I hope we have good relationships with God's people. I hope we are knit together as one. Sweet fellowship is available if we just reach out a little bit and take hands. I know that seems ecumenical and against, you know, everything we stand for. But together, we can experience walking in the Spirit together. How about for others? Those that are the others, the outsiders, the them in life. Truly to see love. In them. I know I've told the story before, but it, it bears repeating tonight. Uh, saw an atheist. He, he had a television show where he was trying to um, debunk everything he possibly could. Uh, going through conspiracy theories. Uh, he, he attacked pharmaceutical companies. Went through all this stuff. And um, the one he uh, uh, liked to attack or got into was faith healers. And wanted to prove that they were a fraud. Wanted to prove that it was nothing more than uh, charlatans and snake oil. Uh, which, well, no, never mind. And... Um, I don't have time for that one tonight. But um, all these folks that just uh, were taking people for a ride, basically, and many of them for money. And so he says, I came down hard on that and, uh, you know, was, was extremely uh, harsh to that, to that group. And he said, all of the other episodes that we did attacking these different groups and attacking pharmaceutical companies, whatever else, he said, I got all kinds of hate mail. All kinds of people saying it's wrong for you to do this. You're a terrible person. Uh, you know, there's people out there that believe in this medicine and you're telling them that it's not real. And there's people that follow this group over here and it's, to them it's the best thing since sliced bread. And you're, you're destroying all of that. He said the one group that I was extremely surprised by were the Christians. He said they didn't necessarily defend the faith healers, but boy were they gracious. People reached out to him, witnessed to him. People came to his live shows, and I, I know one story he told uh, very compellingly. He said a man walked up to him, and in a very serious and earnest uh, tone, said that he had been praying for him, presented him a Bible. And I watched this man, a, a, a self-proclaimed, uh, not just atheist, but a, a militant atheist, trying to lead people away from Christianity, and had been affected by that. Why? Because someone loved him when they had no reason to. When they had every reason in the book not to, but loved him enough to say, hey, I care about you. We may disagree, and I, I may really not like what you have to say, 
but I want to give this to you. There are whole groups of people that it would be very easy for us not to love in this life. There are entire groups of, of people that we can probably even find scripture to condone us having things harsh to say about them. And that's putting it mildly. But you know what's going to be far more effective? Is if we walk in the spirit and let the love of God flow through us. I'm not talking about compromise. I'm not talking about us letting things go. I'm not talking about us not standing for the truth. I'm talking about while we do what God has commanded us to do, still showing love to the least of these. Because that's going to make a difference. If you met an abortion doctor tomorrow, you would have your opinions, you would have your feelings, and all of them would be justified, especially according to Scripture. But you know what they need more than all that? Is the truth of this book. Somebody needs to tell him. Somebody needs to share it with them. And they need to do it in a way where they're not standing on a street corner with a sign screaming at them through a megaphone. That has never been an effective way to preach the gospel. It's an effective way to condemn a nation who's on its way to judgment, not dealing with individuals trying to earn them to Christ. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 11. <clears throat> verse John 4, 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? Everything. All. All more than we will ever give combined. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. It's as simple as it gets. If we walk in the Spirit, we will experience love. And we will experience love like God shows love. Unbiased, unfiltered, without partiality, without hypocrisy, true love. How's your love for others? When we walk in the Spirit, we ought to experience it the way God does. Again, it's not easy. It's not simple. But it is part of walking in the Spirit. Through God's power and through His help, may we show a little bit more of His love to this world. Whether they be brethren or not, the world needs a little bit more of the love of God because it's the only thing that will change lives. It's the only thing that will help people as we come in, count, uh, come in contact with them. How's your love for others tonight as we walk in the Spirit? Let's pray. Father, we're grateful today for your goodness to us. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for loving us first. And Lord, we know that we can only love you because you first loved us. Lord, sometimes we forget that. We forget why we ought to love others. We just sometimes know that we should. And Lord, we struggle with that from time to time. There are folks that in this life, in this world, physically, Lord, it is hard to love them. But Lord, may we walk in the Spirit, and may we find the ways that you love them. And Lord, may we mirror that the best of our ability. May we allow you to live through us. May we continue to walk in the Spirit. And Lord, as we devote our love to you, may it draw us in a closer relationship with you, Lord, that will then make it more natural for us to show that love to others. Lord, we thank you for the church family you've placed us into, the fellowship, and Lord, the, uh, the, just, uh, the, the uh, uh, relationship we can have with your people, Lord. I pray that you'd help us to have a true and unfeigned love of the brethren, and Lord, Lord, then that would extend out to the world around us. May we love like Christ did, and Lord, uh, not in a way of compromise, not in a way of not telling the truth, not in a way of, Lord, uh, uh, not standing up for what is right and what is true, but Lord, that we would find every opportunity that we can um, Lord, to be a, a force for change through the Holy Spirit. Pray you'd help us to walk in the Spirit this week. Be with us as we go. Lord, I pray you'd bless our week. You'd bring us back again safely midweek. Lord, be in all the plans that we have uh, for this week. Go before us, Lord. We have expectant hearts of all that you'll do. Lord, we look forward to it. And uh, Lord, thank you for the many blessings that have led us to today. I pray that you go before us, Lord. We love you. Thank you for meeting with us here until we meet again. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.